Did you know that 8.4 million households rely on satellite internet in the US? That's 6% of internet users today. It relies on orbiting satellites to transmit internet signals. This system proves more expensive than traditional internet, yet provides access to rural communities where other options aren't available. For players who prefer sports and shooting games, satellite internet still comes with many problems. Keep watching to learn more about satellite internet and video game functionality. Satellite internet. The concept behind satellite internet service is surprisingly simple. Your computer shoots a signal request through your modem out to your satellite dish. Then your satellite dish transmits the signal onto a provider's orbiting satellite. The satellite returns the signal to the provider and the provider delivers that signal back to the satellite. From there, it travels to your dish, modem, and computer. Unless you have only one ethernet connection, your home will also require a router to distribute the resulting Wi-Fi signal through your home. Satellite versus others. There are two major satellite internet providers to know about, HughesNet and Viasat. They've come a long way in recent years. Nevertheless, satellite internet by its very nature will feel laggier. There are a handful of reasons for this. Cable internet relies on shielded coaxial cables. Fiber uses shielded fiber optic cables and DSL relies on telephone lines. Learn more about broadband, DSL, and satellite internet performance pros and cons. The sheer distance that satellite signals have to travel increases the likelihood of interference. What's more, since the signal is less direct, satellite internet tends to have higher latency. What is latency? Latency refers to the time it takes for data to transfer from one location to another. Cable, DSL, and fiber internet all have a direct line from the provider's hub to your house or street. As a result, they have less latency. Satellite internet, however, must deal with interference because of its lack of a direct connection. The result? Increased latency. Dreaded data caps. That's not the only reason that satellite internet feels slow though. Unlike other forms of internet, satellite internet doesn't usually come with unlimited data. Instead, you'll have to deal with pesky data caps. A data cap means that once you meet a specific data limit, your speeds will get throttled or you'll get charged an overage fee. Although your internet service provider won't cut off your internet connection entirely, when you get throttled, you'll notice. Why? Because this data cap makes your internet a whole lot slower and far less usable. That said, when you avoid data caps, not all games run poorly on satellite internet or VSAT. The gaming experience. Although we've mentioned the unsatisfactory experiences that some gamers have while using satellite internet, that doesn't mean that all video games are unsuitable for VSAT. It depends on the type of game you're playing and its technical requirements. If your location falls within your satellite provider's footprint, you should achieve speeds of 10 to 20 megabytes per second. That's more than enough for most video games, whether you play on a tablet, PC, phone, or console. That said, the problem of latency remains. In general, travel time to and from a geostationary satellite runs between 500 and 800 milliseconds. This rate will fluctuate based on where you fall under a satellite's footprint. If you're among the lucky percentage of the American population that has access to options other than VSAT, it may be time to trade in your current connection for something more direct. Ready to discuss your options when it comes to internet service? Contact us for a full rundown of providers and options in your area. Thanks for watching. We hope you got a lot of good info here. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.